Good afternoon and welcome to Box Hill. This is where I live in the heart of Surrey and it's uh, 687 feet above sea level and the 2012 Olympics was held here. But today we're going to look for a photograph that can have impact. Now don't worry too much about this if you're just beginning your photography. Um, just looking for that one particular shot you could take many photos in a day, but there may be one shot that you really want that stands out from the rest. So what we're going to do today, I brought a zoom lens along with some other lenses. But the reason I brought a zoom lens is I want to try and capture a cyclist head on under some trees, making the cyclist really stand out as a subject. But we've got to go to the other side of the hill for that. But just before we do, let's just do a little bit of a B-roll so that you can see what we're going to do. And don't worry if you haven't used the zoom lens before, I'm going to give you some nice, easy tips. So let's get into this. Just before we go and try and get this impact shot, you could take loads of photos in one day, but most of them you might be disappointed with. So let's try and see if we can get you one shot that you look at compared to the rest of them and think, wow, I've got something here, something that I can work on. So what I'm gonna do is take this lens off. I'm gonna put on zoom lens don't be daunted by a zoom lens just because they're long and fairly heavy but there's a few pointers to help you get the most out of your zoom lens and not get any camera shake a lot of zoom lens these days have got image stabilization built in and so is the camera body this particular lens doesn't have image stabilization but it doesn't matter there's a very important point with using a zoom to stop you getting that that uh, sort of blurred shot, you know, camera shake. <clears throat> this lens is about 4.5, so the aperture open is quite wide, but not that wide to let in lots of light and giving you an ultra fast shutter speed. So what you can do, you can push your ISO up to get a faster shutter speed. But there's one clincher with using a zoom when you're not going to use a tripod. I didn't bring a tripod today because I didn't want it. So here's a clincher to get you started with your zoom lens. If you're shooting at say 200 millimeter, then push your shutter speed to 400th of a second or more. This will help you avoid camera shake. So whatever focal length you're using, double the shutter speed. If you're shooting at 300 millimeter, make sure that your shutter speed is showing at least 600th of a second or more to avoid camera shape anything under these you will get camera shape and you're going to get that blurred shot and it could be just that one photo of a lifetime and we don't want that to happen so using a zoom is not really that hard make sure you you grip the camera well hold it well and keep it nice and steady and the other little tip is i see some people when they take a photo they tend to jolt the camera down not so good just use your finger click it like that don't force it or push it down just click keep the camera dead still so double the shutter speed to the focal length of the lens really important that will help you and the other is open the aperture up wide now if you want to use a smaller aperture and your shutter speed is really slow this is where you're going to need a tripod unless you have a fast lens that opens up to maybe 2.8 f2 these lenses are very expensive and a lot of wildlife photographers use these kind of lenses as well 
So this type of lens, although it's a, a standard slowish uh, zoom, the image quality is really good and you can still get some great photos. But today we're looking for a photo with impact and I'm looking to get a good cyclist shot. But we need to walk up this road and look for this double corner. So let's, let's go and see how we get on, okay? So you can see, this is the road on Box Hill that I took the picture of the cyclists. You've got a nice sweeping curve, so you've got a road down on the right, road up on the left hand side. I put the camera into high burst, so it's shooting really quickly. I put the shutter speed up to 2,600 of a second, and my ISO is up to three, what is it, 100, 300, 3,000, sorry, ISO to get the shots. Without those, I wouldn't be able to get the shutter speed that I want. So it would have been too slow and the photos would have come out extremely underexposed. Let me just position this camera away from the road. That's better. Now I know I told you about shots with impact. I've got some really good cycling shots today here at Box Hill, but this is just an example of one kind of subject. If you've got a place, a park or anywhere where you live, or you know, a lake, a river, as I said before, but you know it well, particularly when you know about the lighting, when the sun's gonna come up, and most of all, what position the sun is actually gonna be in to get those shots. So today, because I live here at Box Hill, I knew where the lighting was, uh, was gonna be, but it's just a matter of if there were gonna be any cyclists. And there's plenty of them about. So I did get the impact shots today. I set the camera into burst mode, so it's firing off nice and rapidly. One suggestion is um, your SD card needs to be a fast speed. So check on Amazon or anywhere like that for a fast speed card so that when you're taking the shots, the card can carry on reading the images that you've taken. If the card's too slow, chances are the camera's gonna stop and you won't, you'll have to wait until that card has received all the images into it before you can carry on shooting again. I've also got a um, lens hood don't always use it but because of where the sun was today I didn't want to get any flare on the lens so this is a 300 millimeter lens so it's a 70 to 300 millimeter lens but because this is a four-thirds camera it's cropped you've got 140 to 600 lens millimeter wise um, as I say it's not particularly fast but because of that you have to push your ISO up I've pushed mine up to over uh, 3000 ISO which is pretty high but the noise is, is not really a problem noise becomes more of a problem in low light and night time more than in daytime so the quality is still going to be really really good but that's one way of getting a potential shot a shot with impact and I've definitely got one of those today because of the color of the shirt the man was wearing and because of the lighting and the shadows, he just I just waited for him to get into the right light that split second. So the camera was ready on the man. It was already focused. And as soon as he got into that light, bam, that's when I took the photo. It takes a little practice, a little bit of time, but if you're really into your photography, this will come. It will come naturally to you. It takes a while, but it will come. So, what the plan was today for somebody like yourself who may be a beginner or an intermediate photographer be quiet there for goodness sake will you <laughs> um, is to plan your shot taking photographs when you're beginning your photography is a, is the place to you know to start but try and get a shot that stands out from the rest and then when you look at that photograph ask yourself the question why is this so much better than the rest of them? How can I achieve more of these kind of images? So start asking the questions. Look at what you think is one of your best images. 
and then go from there, all right? So let's go and see if we can, we'll come away from the cyclists and we'll, I'll try and find this tower, which they call the Folly. It's like a miniature sort of castle tower. So I'll have a wander and try and find out while I'm here at the moment. So remember, 300 millimeter, 600th of a second plus shutter speed to keep that image sharp. Anything under that without a tripod and without image stabilization in your lens or your camera, you're going to get camera shake. And these days it's less likely that you will. But because this lens is not, it's not what I call an expensive lens, but it still does the job because I know the camera settings. But if you've got any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to ask, all right? Okay, let's go and find this folly, shall we? Come with me. Well, I hope you enjoyed those little tips about photography with impact. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that button on the right hand side. If you've got any questions or anything you need to know, don't hesitate to get back to my channel. And I'll catch you soon. Bye bye.